Stayallday.com. Stay now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative, which is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of wait for things to happen. And then we put all this together into one bundle, one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy, one book, one show, one daily masterclass that is called, all of this all under one umbrella called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is why you keep having the same problems. On the same problems keep popping up over and over and over again. Now, before I go into explaining where this topic is coming from, let me tell you all that I have a text message line where I want you to text me today and tell me the best insight you got from today's class. Tell me an idea that popped into your head that maybe you thought of a long time ago but got away from. Now you're back on it because you heard me talk about it. If you have a question or Anything else around anything that I said here today or some other way that I can help you have a challenge or question about anything that might not even be related to this subject, send me a text message at the number 305-384-6894. Once you do so, not only will you get a response from me, I spend time every day going through my text messages and replying, you'll also get my daily motivation text, which I send out every single morning straight to your phone. Again, the number is 305-384-6894. Nine, four. So all that said, today's topic, once again, is why you keep having the same problems. If you are finding that you keep getting into the same situation over and over again, and it's a situation that you don't want, and a situation that are good that you want, you should just stick to that. Whatever is causing that, just let that keep going, or right, keep doing whatever led to that. But if you're getting into a situation that you don't want to be in, and it keeps happening over and over again, today we're going to talk about why that's happening, and maybe, just maybe, what you might be able to do about it. So let's get right into it. Point number one. Topic once again, why you keep having the same problems is you are trying to solve the wrong problem. All right, the problem keeps coming up because every solution that you try, you're coming up with solutions for something that is not actually the issue that you need to deal with. It's kind of like if you have a, a leak in your roof and you keep getting different vessels to collect the water that is dripping from your ceiling. All right, that's it. You can get whatever kind of vessels you want. You can use a bottle, you can use a, a bucket, you can use some Tupperware, you can use pots and pans, but no matter which one you use, the water keeps dripping because you are solving the wrong problem. The solution is not how do you collect the water that's dripping from the roof. The solution is let's fix the roof. A lot of people in life, they just keep trying different vessels, but they never actually fix the roof. They're solving the wrong problem. So one example of this, and I'll use myself as an example in this, is people who may not have a lot of talent for a certain, at a certain uh, vocation, but they keep trying to force themselves to be something that they're not very good at in that thing. I've told you all the story of how before I started playing basketball, which I went on to become a professional at, I was playing baseball, and I wasn't very good at baseball, and it was only, it was only at the point that I realized I'm not really that talented at baseball, so I should probably go find something else to do when I stopped trying to solve that problem of making myself good at baseball. I wanted to play a sport, but I was just playing the wrong sport. So the problem often for us in life is not the activity itself or the people within the activity. It's just that maybe you're in the wrong space. Maybe you're just doing the wrong activity. There's nothing wrong with the, the thing you're doing. There's nothing wrong with that thing that you're doing. It's just that you shouldn't be doing it. You understand what I'm saying? When I was playing baseball, it just wasn't going to work because it wasn't the right sport for me. I did a little bit. Of, I remember my mom put me in like a, a tennis camp. It was like a kiddie tennis camp. It wasn't like serious tennis. I wasn't good enough to be playing the serious tennis camp, but I wasn't ever really that good at tennis. and I did, never really took it that serious. But I think if I had taken it serious, maybe I would have been a good tennis player, but I didn't have the mentality at that time for it, the little bit of time that I played it, so it wasn't going to work. Football, the same thing. Eventually, I came on to basketball, and I was finally in the right space. But I remember I had someone say to me once, they said that they wanted to write a book, but they didn't know if they should try to get a publishing deal or if they should self-publish the book. Therefore, they hadn't really gotten serious about their writing of the book yet because they weren't sure what route they were going to take to get the book out into the world. And what I explained to them, and you'd be surprised how many people come with this exact challenge when it comes to specifically when it comes to book writing people saying well i don't know if i should do uh, traditional publishing or if i should do self-publishing when it comes to my book 
often they don't actually have as much of a as much of a choice as they think they do. I talked about this in episode 14, 17, how to write and publish a book, and also episode 1893, traditional versus self-publishing when it comes to book writing, just a few weeks ago, is that's not actually the problem that you need to solve. The problem that most authors, aspiring authors need to solve is actually writing the book. I mean, actually having your 20,000 or 50,000 or 200,000 words, however long your book's gonna be, that's the biggest challenge that you need to solve. As soon as you solve that, okay, then everything else becomes easy. All right? How are you gonna put the book out? How are you gonna sell the book? It's not actually, let me not use the word easy. It's not easy, it's relative. But that's the biggest challenge most authors have. Most people who say they wanna have a book out there, their biggest challenge is they haven't written it yet. Now, everything else is a lot easier than actually doing the writing, but this is all going into this first point is that often people are solving a problem that's not actually the problem that they need to be solving. The problem is, since there's no words on the page, they don't have a book. So it doesn't matter what way you put it out because you don't have an it to put out. Or an athlete who reached out to me once and said, Dre, you know, I want to play basketball overseas, but I heard that sometimes a player doesn't get paid on time from their professional team. So, you know, I'm second guessing whether or not I want to play overseas or not because I'm not sure they're going to pay me on time. This is what a player said to me once. And... I knew he was, I knew this was, he was full of shit, what he was saying. And I told him as much and said to him, listen, has any professional basketball team ever offered you a contract? Because if they haven't, right, you ain't got to worry about getting paid because you don't have a job. All right, so nobody, over, nobody owes you any money. So you ain't, you ain't got to worry about a team paying you late because you're not on a team. So that's not your problem. Your problem is you need to actually get a contract and get on overseas. Then you can worry about whether they're going to pay you one time or not. First of all, let's just get you in a situation where somebody actually owes you because you've actually been at work. When they go to work, you have to actually have to have a job. And to have a job, somebody has to hire you. So how about we solve that problem first so you getting hired? Then you can worry about, all right, are they going to pay me on time or not? That's not your problem. And... Now, being in these worlds that I've been in, whether it's book writing, whether it's playing sports, whether it's uh, professional basketball overseas, it was an area where a lot of people don't have accurate information. I hear often people having challenges or they think they have challenges that are not actually their real challenges. And this is one of the, the biggest consumers of time and energy for a lot of people out there who are giving their resources to trying to solve something that doesn't even need to be solved. So that's why this point is such an important one, is that you got to make sure when you're out there doing your work and you're investing your time, money, attention, energy, and focus, that you are actually solving the right problem. Because if you, if you solve the wrong problem, then that time that you put in, or those resources that you invested, you definitely can't get the time back. And those other resources, you might not be able to get those back so easily either. And they've been used up. So now you're gonna to have to go get more resources to replace the ones that you already used up. This is one of the most important aspects, one of the most valuable reasons why you wanna have someone around you or someone's, plural, around you can, who can help you see things that you can't see. Extra sets of eyes in the form of a mastermind group, a mentor, a coach, uh, someone who has just someone who you look up to who has seen what you want to see who has done what you want to do who has been where you want to go so that they can help you understand if and when you are solving the wrong problem because the last thing you want to do is invest your time into something and realize that you invested in the wrong thing even if you invest your time into something and you do it the right way but then you realize oh well this wasn't even what I need to be doing so as I told the basketball player, if no one's offered you a contract, you don't have to worry about getting paid. Or a person who says, I wanna to go to the gym and I wanna start working out and lifting weights, but I don't wanna to get too bulky. But this is a person who's never lifted weights before. So what I would say to them, and I had people say this to me before, I say to them, well, how about we actually, how about we get you to actually enter the gym facility once or twice before we worry about you having too much muscles. All right, you've never even been to the gym. So I don't think your problem is gonna be you're gonna have you're having too much muscle. Your biggest problem right now is that you never even been into the gym. So how about we do that first? Then we'll worry about you having too much muscle. So make sure you are solving the right problem. Again, this is the value of a mastermind group. This is the value of having a coach. This is the value of having a mentor is that the work that you're doing, you're actually doing the right work. You're not just working to be working, you're doing the work that's actually gonna help you solve the problem that you wanna solve. Point number two, today's topic once again is why you keep having the same problems. The solution 
which you are at least somewhat aware of, I mean the actual solution to your challenge, whatever it is, that solution will push you out of your comfort zone. For you to actually go and execute on that solution, it will push you out of your comfort zone, so you avoid it because you don't want to step out of your comfort zone. Now, all of us as human beings, we all have comfort zones. Some of our comfort zones are larger than others, but anything that pushes any one of us out of our relative comfort zone is uncomfortable for us. So nobody really likes to step outside of their comfort zone. Nobody likes to step outside of their comfort zone. The differences between people is that some people understanding that even though they don't like stepping out of their comfort zone, they make themselves do it anyway. That's the discipline. That's the mental toughness that I know this is going to be uncomfortable, but I'm going to do it anyway. Whereas others, when the situation looks uncomfortable to them from the outside looking in at that situation, they say, well, I'm just not going to do it at all because it looks uncomfortable for me. This is really right here. This is the crux of who achieves and gets at least close to reaching their potential and who doesn't. This is the third day, which is the book that I'm holding up right now if you're watching this on video. The decision that separates the pros from the amateurs. What separates a pro from an amateur is not talent. It is not opportunity. It is not timing. It is not luck. It's not even skill. What it is is when you get to the situations that are uncomfortable, that are not in your comfort zone, that the, the newness, the novelty, the excitement has worn off, do you still show up and give your best effort even though it doesn't feel good to do so? That's what makes the pros the pros. Many people in life keep having the same problem over and over again because the solution to the problem, they know exactly what it is, they just don't want to do it. And therefore, they don't do it. That's it. You know how you can solve your problem, but to solve it will require you doing something that you are not used to doing, something that's uncomfortable for you, and you don't want to deal with that discomfort, so you voluntarily choose to not do it. Now, you might feign ignorance that you don't know what the solution is, but you know what the solution is. You just don't want to do it. You don't want to do the work. And work is hard. All right? That's why hard work is called hard work, because it is not easy. And this is what makes a pro a pro, the fact that they know that it's not going to be easy, yet they show up and do it anyway. That is mental toughness. That is the third debt. One of my favorite books called Thick Face, Black Heart by Chin Ning Chu. I'm paraphrasing something that she said in this book, and this is a really important uh, excerpt from the book that I remind myself of often. She said, creating change in your life requires leaving your normal station and exchanging the known conditions of your life, that means your comfort zone, for uncertainty and unfamiliarity. In other words, stepping outside of your comfort zone. Most people claim that they want success, yet, they are not willing to leave their comfort zones in order to get it. Now, I'm outside of the paraphrasing now. What Chin was explaining in Thick Face Black Heart is that many of us say that we want to be, most people, if you listen to this show, you want to be successful. All right? You want to make the most of your game. You want to achieve at a higher level. You want to be the best you that you could possibly be. Understand something. In order for you to become the best you that you could be, you at some point, actually at many points, plural, you will be forced to step outside of your comfort zone if you're actually gonna make that a reality. You will have to step outside of your comfort zone. You're gonna to have to do some things that you don't wanna do. Those five forms of investment, time, money, attention, energy, focus, you're gonna to have to give time to some things that might be a little bit uncomfortable for you to give time to. You're gonna to have to spend money on some stuff that you might not have ever thought you would ever invest money into. You're gonna give attention to things that you have never paid attention to. You're gonna put energy into stuff that you know putting energy into is gonna come with some pain, but you're gonna do it anyway. And you're gonna to have to put a focus on some things that might be a little bit uncomfortable for you in order for you to become the best version of you. Now, again, this is a, this is a decision that you get to make. This is a choice here, all right? That's why the third day, I see, again, that subtitle, the decision that separates the pros from the amateur. It is not the talent, it's not the luck, it's not the, the random drawing that separates the pros from the amateurs, it's a decision. And here's the thing about decisions, folks, is that they're always available to you. You can make any decision that you want at any moment that you want to. You might not feel like you have the power of decision, but you always do. Empowered people always understand that they have the power of decision. You get to choose, all right, am I going to do this thing that's going to push me out of my comfort zone so I can get to the best version of myself or at least find out if it's going to help me get there? Or am I going to just stick with the known conditions of my life, like Chin Ning Chu explained in Thick Face Black Heart, and just stay exactly where I'm at? 
Many people say that they want success in life, but as soon as they realize that that success, that the price of that success is stepping outside of the known conditions of life and doing something different, they change their mind about that success. Now, what happens is, here's the trick. They change their mind internally about the success, meaning in their own heads, they realize, all right, well, I don't want to do, I do want to be successful, but I don't want to have to do X, Y, Z to be successful. Those are the things that step outside of their comfort zone. So they decide, again, inside, in their own heads, all right, I don't want to do X, Y, Z to be successful. So externally, they won't ever say that. Most people will never say that because then they would look, you would kind of look foolish, like, all right. You wouldn't tell anybody, hey, I want to be successful, but in order to be successful, I would have to do this much more work, give this much more time, and give this much effort and invest in these things. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to keep claiming I want success, but I'm going to keep holding myself back. Most people will not announce that, but that's exactly what most people do in life. They say they want success, then realizing what it's actually going to cost, the real cost to be the boss, they don't want to pay it. So they keep claiming that they want success, while at the same time, subtly and some people explicitly self-sabotaging so that they never have to step outside of their comfort zone and then claim that they didn't know what to do or claim they didn't have an opportunity or claim that things weren't working in their favor. How many people do you know who fit that description? Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is why you keep having the same problems in your life. Number three, you believe that the solution is outside of your control. Now, I just gave you it an example of a person saying that the solution is outside of their control. Well, I'm not getting the opportunity. I'm not getting a chance. These things aren't working in my favor. That's not what I'm talking about here in point number three. What I mentioned in point number two, that's a person who knows that the solution is within their control. They're just bullshitting themselves. And thusly, they turn around and bullshit the rest of the world because they're just not willing to do the work. I'm talking about here in point number three, the person who really thinks that they can't do anything about solving their problems or handling their challenges. These are the athletes who would say to me, Dre, I'm not getting a lot of playing time because, and it would have something to do with the coach. And I would always, I mean, I made 20 videos over the years on YouTube, just talking to athletes about this exact thing. Like, if you're not getting playing time on your sporting team and any athlete who's listening to me right now, or parent of an athlete or coach who's listening to this, you can give this to your athletes, let your athletes hear it. If you are not getting the playing time that you want on your sports team, there's something that you are either doing or not doing that is causing that situation. Guaranteed. Now, is your coach an idiot? Possibly. Is your coach a hater? Possibly. Is your coach showing favoritism to players other than you? Possibly. But guess what? Despite all of that, there's still something that you're doing or not doing that is causing you to not play. And until you take ownership of that idea, you're going to keep sitting on the bench. Now, if that's what you want to do, okay, don't say nobody gave you the information. And again, coaches who are listening to me right now, uh, your players don't want to hear from you. You let them hear this part from me. Let me say it to them. Or you can look up on YouTube. I got a bunch of videos talking about this very concept. A person at work, for example, says, well, you know, I'm not getting the, the promotion or the advancement that I want because my supervisor or the company itself is getting in my way. They're blocking me from my success. So they put a glass ceiling above my head. The problem with this kind of thinking is that, and I've said this so many times here on the show, is that whenever you think your biggest problem is something outside of yourself, in other words, an externality, what if that externality never changes? I mean, a lot of people talk about these externalities as if right, this externality is the thing that is holding this person back or holding these people back or is causing this problem, but they never actually answer the question, what if the externality never changes? Now, I understand that you might want to change it and you might want to organize and gather people to try to change it, but what if you fail? What if you can't change it? What if it pushes back? What if it fights back? You know, most of the time in life, when you say this group or these people or this entity is wrong, there's someone on the other side of that conversation that says, well, no, I'm not wrong. We are not wrong. And no, we don't need to change. We're going to keep it exactly as it is. What if you fail? What if you can't change it? What are you going to do? What are you going to tell the people that you stirred up and got excited about changing this thing? If you fail to change it, what are you going to tell them? If their solution was that we just need to change this thing, but then you can't change it. What do you tell those people? If all of the, if all of the solution is outside of themselves, what do you say to them? And this is a question that a lot of, there's a lot of hustlers out here, a lot of different types of hustlers whose whole hustle is telling you 
how something outside of yourself is the biggest thing holding you back from success. Yeah, they never mention what you need to do or what you could do just in case that thing that's holding you back never changes. What if it just stays as it is for the next 10 years? You okay with just staying where you are for the next 10 years? I mean, they don't tell you that. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. If your biggest problem is an externality, you got a bigger problem. I told you in episode 1879, externalities are not excuses. So if you think your biggest problem is something outside of yourself, I'm going to tell you that it's not. The biggest problem is the way that you're looking at the situation and the way that you're looking at yourself and disempowering yourself by saying that the problem is something outside of your control. If your biggest problem is outside of your control, you are taking your own power away. Unfortunately, I don't know why you would do that, but this is what you're doing. I can't explain your actions. You can. So if this is your main reason, your conundrum is it won't change. So what are you going to do different? This is why I say all the time here that we always bring the conversation back to number one. Here at Work On Your Game, I don't care if you're reading a book, if you're listening to a podcast, if you're watching a video, if you meet me in person and we're having a conversation, if you text me, if you come to my live events, we always bring the conversation back to number one. Number one is you, the person in the mirror. Why? Because the person in the mirror is the only thing that we ever have full control over. And if you think your problem is something that you don't have full control over, you have a bigger problem that you might not be able to change that thing which you don't control. I mean, does that just, doesn't that just logically make sense? So what are you going to do? I mean, I'm talking about what are you going to do that you can actually control? I'm not saying what are you going to do about the things that you don't control because those are just theories. All right, They might work, they might not. I want to know what are you going to do that you 100% know you can do something about, i.e. you. Again, this, the name of the show is, what's the third word? Work on your game. This is the self-accountability that takes a, little, this takes a little bit of mental toughness. It actually takes a lot of mental toughness because there are so many people in the world today and tomorrow and yesterday and they will continue to be out there that always want to tell you that your problems are not your fault. And I told you this about marketing. It's a conundrum of marketing that when you're selling something, you never tell your customers that their problems are their fault because if that's the case, then they don't need you. Now you tell them that the problem's not their fault. All they gotta do is buy your product and then everything will be solved. But at the same time, when you look in the mirror and talk to yourself, you tell yourself that your problems are your fault because then you can do something about them. It's, a, it's kind of a conundrum of marketing. This is a, a human psychology thing that I'm not gonna go too much deeper in here in this episode, but I would suggest you read some Robert Cialdini work, like his book, Influence, and books on persuasion so you can understand it's kind of the, the paradox of the way we talk to ourselves versus the way we talk to other people but I'm going to talk to you and tell you that you need to solve it yourself I'm trying to give you some real personal development that will actually help you whether or not you get it from me let's recap today's class which is why you keep having the same problems number one you are trying to solve the wrong problem all right you keep changing the bucket that is collecting the water that's dripping from your roof that's not actually the problem the problem is that the roof is still dripping you got to get the leaky roof Fix. Don't keep solving the same problem. It's like the person who says, I want to lift weights, but I don't want to get too bulky. Well, how about you just get a gym membership first, then we worry about you having too much muscles. Point number two, the solution, which you're at least somewhat aware of, pushes you out of your comfort zone, so you avoid it. Like Chen Ning Chu said in Thick Face Black Heart, change requires leaving your normal station and exchanging the known conditions of your life for uncertainty and unfamiliarity most people claim to want success almost everybody says they want to be successful but as soon as they realize the cost of that success they ain't willing to pay the bill or they don't want to pay the invoice so they stay where they're at and then they make up bullshit excuses as to why they have not changed point number three you believe the solution is outside of your control a lot of athletes say well i'm not getting playing time because of my coach or a bit person at work says well i'm not moving up in my industry because of the boss or something that the company is doing. The problem is the boss or the company or the coach might never change. What if they never change? What are you going to do? At some point, you have to take ownership of the situation where you're doing something that you have control over, not something that other people control because they, may, they might not think that they're doing anything wrong. They might say, well, no, we don't agree with you. We're just going to keep it as it is. And that's all right because you can't control other people, but you can always control yourself. That's why we always bring it back to us. So if you're having the same problems, one of the big reasons is you're thinking that the solution to the problem lies outside of you. I'm here to tell you that the solution does not. This is how you empower yourself by understanding that you have the power to alter your situation. It's not about what anybody else or anything else does because what if they change their mind and decide they ain't doing it? You're gonna have to answer that question. 
All that said, send me a text. Tell me the best insight that you got from today's class. My number is 305-384-6894. And my third day mastermind is now open. If you want to be coached by me, if you want to work with me, if you want someone who can help hold you accountable, who can help give you the strategies, help see the things that you can't see, whether it's for your business, for building your brand, for your personal development, and you want to work directly with me, this is as close as you can get to working with me directly. Go to workonyourgameuniversity.com. The link is down below in the show notes or description wherever you're watching this. Workonyourgameuniversity.com. You can click the button, fill out a quick form. We'll schedule a time for you to get on a Zoom call with me. We'll talk about where you're at, where you want to go, what's the gap between the two, and how exactly you want me to help you. I can tell you what I can do for you, and we'll see where we go from there. Again, that's at workonyourgameuniversity.com. Or you can just send me a text. I'll send you a link to get a link to filling out that form to set up that call. Work on your game. Dre, all day.